Hi students, um, this is Amy. We are actually looking at a pretty unique um, study skill in this video. Um, when you watch videos on my channel, I have them organized into different playlists, like it's listening practice, it's pronunciation practice, it's a vocabulary practice, it's a grammar practice. Um, this little lesson, this little explanation doesn't really fit into any of these categories. Maybe we could describe this video as a um, study skill for English or a way to be pushing yourself in your English study, a way to help support your English study at home. Um, some students, maybe you just want to skip this video. It's kind of an advanced idea, but maybe you watch it and you use this skill in the future when you're in GED or when you're at university studying. Um, for my students who are who are a little bit more advanced, you're thinking about like a TOEFL exam, you're thinking about a university entrance exam, um, or you just really want a way to kind of help support yourself with advanced vocabulary at home, um, this video, this skill should help you out a little bit. Um, what we're going to talk a little bit about today is something that's called corpus linguistics. Um, and this is actually something that I studied as an undergraduate, um, as a batch, a part of my bachelor's program in an English language teaching class. Uh, the idea for us is how can we find more examples of this new word, this new piece of vocabulary? Um, how can I find a hundred sentences that have this word so I can see a hundred different examples of this word in a sentence so I can feel very confident in my usage of this word? And that's what we're talking about when we talk about corpus linguistics. Um, this word core, core, it comes from Latin, the Latin word for body. Um, I'm not sure about Spanish or Portuguese, Italian, but I know in French, we actually, this word core means body. Um, we do see this in other places in English. For example, the Peace Corps. The Peace Corps is a group of people who work together throughout the world promoting peace. Um, peace Corps is an international organization, like a body of people, right? A group of people. Um, Marine Corps, we see this word. Again, it's a body of people, a group of people that are working together. Um, we also see this word in English in the word corpse. Um, corpse is the vocabulary word that means a dead body. Um, but this, this Latin word of cor, the reason I'm coming to that is because we see it in this idea of corpus. So we are thinking about the body of English. And how do we see um, a word used throughout the body of English? And this is what's called corpus linguistics, studying how a word is used in hundreds of sentences. Um, and the most famous website is the one that's written across the screen here. Um, in just a minute, I'll take you to that website and I'll show you how to use the website. The name of this website is the Corpus of Contemporary American English. Um, we have the, the web address, the HTTPS colon forward slash www.english hyphen corpora dot org forward slash coca. Um, so let's jump over to that website and I'll show you how to use it and what benefit it could have for your English study. Okay, so when we arrive on this website for the Corpus of Contemporary American English, um, I've, I've typed in the address in my um, URL bar at the top of my web page. My screen will look like this. Now, what this is, is a huge database. It has a collection of millions millions of examples of words in context. So there is an opportunity on here. It does have an, an area where you can make an account. 
I have never done this. I have no idea. Um, there is also an opportunity here that you could download the collection of data. I have no idea how huge that download would be. Um, I can't even imagine with the amount of data that's in this database, how much space it would take up, how many gigabytes that it would take up for storage. So I have never done that. When I come to this website, what I will do is I will come over on the left side of this screen and I will click into this text box and it's going to um, give me the opportunity to text in a word. Last week when I was talking with Mortaza in class about this website, we were talking about the word otherwise. So let's use the word otherwise. When I type in the word, I can either hit enter or I can hit find. And what it shows me here across is that it has found 36,492 examples of the word otherwise. So the next thing I need to do is click actually on the word otherwise to open up. Now it's going to give me a list um, of the sentence taken from some, uh, um, some item, some document. Over here on the left side of the, um, of the screen, it's giving you the newspaper, the article, where did it come from? Um, as I scroll down, I can see things like eLife, data science, survey methodology. These must be magazines. These must be journals, um, academic journals. The Journal of Chem Informatics, um, PLOS Biology, Biological Engineering, and it's telling me uh, Cato Journal, Harvard J Law, Public Policy. These are the magazines, the journals, the research document that the sentence was pulled out of. The sentence itself here is on the right. Um, so I can see if all the segments are processed, stop. Otherwise, go back to two. This is based on the assumption of, hum, 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 I have no idea what that is. An otherwise unlocated Greek town. Um, unless otherwise indicated or otherwise used. Mm, unless otherwise noted has a lot of different usage. Let me go back and use a less academic word instead of using the word otherwise. Um, today in class, we were talking about the word where, W-E-A-R, and how I will say wear clothing, absolutely, but I also say wear makeup, wear perfume. I also say like medication can wear off. So I just want to find different ways to use the word wear in a sentence. I'm going to click find matching strings again or hit enter. It has found 35,370 examples of the word where. I want to click on it here on the left. Um, again, okay, now these are newspapers, the New York Post, the USA Today, the Chicago Sun-Times, the Detroit Free Press, these are newspapers. Um, mail carriers can wear a lap seat belt. Wear a band on your left hand. Wear padding and chainmail. Um, I wear a wig. The wear and tear of 50 years. Mm, to wear a wire, to wear a helmet. And I can see hundreds of different sentences using the word wear. This could be especially helpful for something like a phrasal verb. Uh, last week, earlier this week, Lydia asked about the word pull off, and it was in a movie, they were talking about pull off the road. So let me do pull off and click find matching strings. Less often, look at that, the word where had 35,000. Um, I bet the word pull would have 35,000, but pull off has 1,950 examples. Let me click in to pull off. 
Um, again, these are coming from spoken. S-P-O-K is spoken. Um, NPR in the morning. These are news. Um, Fox McCollum, NBC Today, ABC Nightline. These are new. Um, they can pull off some of that. Ah, it's a tough look to pull off. Ooh, that's a very interesting. If I... When I want to see more, for example, but I was really hoping to pull off one last one. What does that mean? I have no idea. Over here where it says NPR morning on the left, I can click on it and it will give me a longer expanded um, context. So I can see the sentences behind, the sentences after, and I can get a stronger understanding of what they were talking about with pull off. So the benefit here that I can see 20 different ways to use this phrasal verb that I'm not sure about. Um, when I click back again, as you see this page, you're typing in the address, you're seeing this as the main landing page. You can make an account. I'm not sure. Maybe you can save searches, something like this. You can download the database, but really the best benefit is that you can click here, you search something. Um, there are different um, corpora. There are different corpora of English. My, my button here in the middle that shows the box and the arrow going out does allow me to change to different corpora. I like this corpus of contemporary American English. It's using from a lot of different spoken, newspaper, um, literature, things like that. If I change to a different corpora, for example, I only want to see how the word is used on the internet. I can see how the word is used in Wikipedia. Um, I can see how the word is used only in TV, informal TV, informal movies, um, British, right? This has a hundred million entries in the database, but it's all British. Um, Wikipedia, of course, has 1.9 billion, but it comes from Wikipedia, which is more informally written. It's not going to have that formal. Um, now, N-O-W, just has web news, but look, 9 billion from 2010 up to last month. My, my preference is the corpus of contemporary American English. It uses a nice balanced amount of resources, spoken, written, magazines, newspapers, academics, so that you have a new word. You're not sure what that word means. You want to see the word in a hundred different sentences. It's a great way to um, support your English studies at home, especially when you're thinking about TOEFL, academic English, university study, these types of things. So I hope this can be a good resource for some of you. Um, until next time, students, take care. Bye.